Good evening. Welcome everyone. Evening. Nearly at the end. It's been a marathon, hasn't it? Monday, Thursday, next week. Yeah. Come back to the Lord your God. He is kind and full of mercy. He is patient and keeps his promise. He is always ready to forgive and not to punish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our first song. What other context, what other place do, is there where you sit side by side and confess your sins together? We confess that we're sinful people. It's an amazing, amazing privilege, isn't it? Father, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to acknowledge our sins and turn to you for forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in all that we say and do. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. As Jesus died on the cross for us, we ask to be made right with you and live in peace. As we receive your promise of forgiveness, let us live a life of thanks and love to all people. From Psalm 103, written by a, a murderer, an adulterer. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse. He will not hold on to his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He does not repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who honour and respect him. He removes all our sins. 
as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Let's see. The first reading for tonight comes from Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. 
but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up on, in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second readings from Romans 5, verses 12 to 19. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And from Hebrews 4. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, Yet he did not sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, last Monday I went to Kurong. I needed to buy a new Bible. And I got there and there's no car parks anywhere. It was full. So I thought, well, I'm a pastor and I'm I'm buying a Bible. I parked in a no parking spot. (laughs) I wrote a note and put it under the windscreen wiper. I said, dear parking inspector, look, I'm a pastor. I'm buying a Bible. I'll be as quick as possible. Forgive us our trespasses. (laughs) When I came out, it didn't take long. I got back to the car. There's a note under the wiper, another one. Dear Pastor, if I don't give you a parking ticket, I'll lose my job. Lead us not into temptation. (laughs) Yeah. Can you resist temptation? The lure of temptation mostly comes from the inside, in the heart. It says, there's an old saying, the fox may be caged, but his thoughts are always in the chicken shed. The lure of temptation also comes from the outside, in. Nigella Lawson says, When women go wrong, men go right after them. (laughs) Or as God puts it in Proverbs, A temptuous woman is like a deep pit, like a bandit she lies in wait. And I'm sure you could change that to man as well. Today, Jesus is tempted by the devil himself. And it's a contest. Um, The very first contest, of course, was with the devil and Adam and Eve. And we know that Adam and Eve failed miserably. Now it's between Jesus, a man, fully human, and fully also the Son of God. And it's God who creates this contest. And he's done it before with Job and other places. God creates the contest. It says, the Spirit of God led Jesus out into the wilderness. There's stuff going on here, isn't there? The devil confronted Adam in a garden where there is plenty of food and he wasn't hungry. The devil confronts Jesus in the desert after 40 days of fasting and he was very, very hungry. The devil confronted Adam and Eve as a couple with mutual support. And here the devil confronts Jesus alone. And the devil seems to have a three-pronged way of tempting people, or in this contest at least, 
And the first one is doubt. Did God really say you shouldn't eat the apple? The next one is to question God's authority. Surely you won't die. That can't be true. Just from eating an apple. And then the lie. Hey, if you eat the apple, you will be like God. So now the devil tries this plot against Jesus himself. Stupid, isn't he? But he does the same thing. Doubt. If God is your father, it seems like he's not looking after you. Look at you, you're starving. Why don't you just turn these stones into bread? And Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I would have just made some sourdough. but Then God questions, sorry, the devil questions God's authority. He leads him to the highest point of the temple. He says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. If God is your father, surely he will take care of you. Surely he'll float you down to the ground. Of course, if he really is your father. And you really are his son. And Jesus resists that temptation. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So then he tries the lie. The devil shows all the kingdoms of the world to Jesus. I'll give it all to you. I'll give you all authority. I can do that. If you worship me. And Jesus resists. Get away from me Satan. For it is written worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And you know the devil left him. And the angels came and attended to him. Adam and Eve fell like flies. But Jesus rose in triumph. The devil ran and hid. Three men have been captured by an army. It's a bit too real at the moment, isn't it? One by one they're brought to the torture rooms. The first one knows that he must not give any information, but he also knows that the enemy is ruthless and that they will eventually break him. So he thinks, why go through it all? So he tells them all that they want to know. The second one is determined not to tell them anything, so the torture begins... Eventually they break him and he tells them everything they want to know. The third one says, you will not break me, you'll have to kill me before I talk. And so they begin their gruesome act, you know how it goes. It goes on and on and on, but they don't break him. They ramp it up and still they don't break him. Finally they realise it's no use. They'll never break him. So all three men were tempted by the enemy. But which one faced the full force of the enemy? You know it's the one who resisted. Let's not ever think that Jesus' temptations are less than what we experience just because he's the son of God. Only Jesus has looked the devil in the eye and stood up to his full force. And the devil will think twice before taking on Jesus again. Adam crumbled at the sight of Eve holding an apple. Poor thing. Hebrews tells us very, very clearly, Jesus was tempted in every way as we are. Every single way. And yet sinned not. And Hebrews also tells us, because Jesus suffered when he tempted, was tempted, He is able to help others. He's able to help us who are being tempted. I'm guessing you might be thinking that we're pretty pathetic in the face of temptation. But the text says there is help. Listen, here it is. He doesn't condemn us for our sin. He sympathises with us. He's sorry for us because he knows our very temptation. He knows our sin. And he took our shame to the cross. Every time we fall into temptation, we should be rejected, we should be humiliated. The Father should turn his face away from us. 
Jesus suffers and takes our shame to the cross. And the proof is what Jesus said. Um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God turned his face away from Jesus. God is pure love. It's not that he's mean or whatever. Love cannot come into contact. Love can, pure love consumes evil. God's nature doesn't allow him to have anything to do with the sin. He had to abandon his son. So I pray you, hope, you have the hope of knowing Jesus has triumphed over the power of temptation and the devil. And I pray you know what John promises in baptism. We are in him and he is in us. And despite our lives and what we get up to, we are united to the one who beat the devil. The one who lives with the Father forever. I know that you and I will never beat temptation. We'll never beat it. But I also know that we have the Holy Spirit. And scripture actually says we can actually make the right choices if we actually try. And it's true that saying no to little things helps us to say no to bigger things. You know, at the end of the day, let's know he stood the test. He suffered the torture and he won for us. And it's a gift to us. So I don't know what you've picked up on these 40-day themes that we've been looking at. To me, the 40 days of Lent have taught us that the number 40 is connected to trial and testing. And we've seen the people of God over the last few weeks um, fall and fail over and over. We've seen them punished. We've seen them killed. Tonight we see Jesus taking on the number 40 and winning triumphantly for us. So we have two take-home promises from our readings tonight. For just as though... Sorry, for just as through the disobedience of one man, Adam, many of us, all of us were made sinners, so through the obedience of one man, the many, that's us, will be made righteous. That's one. And the other one, Jesus invites us to use his words when we face temptation. What might they be? One, two, four words. Get behind me, Satan. Let's pray. Father, today we give you thanks for our intimate union with Jesus who has won every battle for us. Help us resist and help us live a life of thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith with thousands, millions of Christians tonight. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, son of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and we'll sing our hymn. And just be reminded that our retiring offering is for the ministry of the school chaplains as we sing.
Father, your word reveals to us a simple truth that sin entered this world because people fell into temptation. They believed they could be like you. We confess this and ask for your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your word reveals another simple truth that sin is defeated and we can become the people we are intended to be by your grace through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for your love, which from the moment of our birth has known and called us by name from out of this world of sin into the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your word promises to lift the brokenhearted, heal the wounded and bring peace. We ask that your love is behind every action which brings healing and peace to the Ukraine. We ask that your wisdom changes the heart of those who persecute and execute and dominate. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray the prayer Jesus gave us Lead us not into temptation. Strengthen us against the temptations of the devil and remove us from all lust and every unrighteousness and shield us against those out to tempt us, those seen and those unseen. Teach us to do your will that we can love you before all things with a pure heart and mind. For you are our maker and our redeemer, our help, our comfort, our trust, our hope, and praise and glory be with you now and forever. Amen. And we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with his favour and give you peace. Amen. Let's stand and we'll go out slowly with that tune, those words.